Are you living the life you want? Spending enough time with the ones you love? Welcome to the Real Estate of Mind Show, where you'll learn how becoming a successful real estate investor can change your life like it did ours. We're here to help you reach all of your goals and create wealth through real estate investing. So let's roll. All right. Welcome back to the Real Estate of Mind Show, where we're your hosts, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. Hello, everybody. And uh, we're here to help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing, because that's who we are. And that's what we do. So... Um, we uh, like to bring special guests on on a regular basis to have conversation besides somebody just that just besides us talking, right? <laughs> so you, you want to hear more things and get some more we perspective. We hear enough of Glenn talking. That, that's not very nice. That's not very nice at all the way you started this. So. I hear enough of Glenn talking. Yeah, isn't that, that nice? Let's go with that. Yeah, that's not even nice to be honest with you. So I want to uh, introduce our uh, our guest here today. So we got Mr. Satch Bernhardt here today. Satch, welcome. Hey, Glenn and Ember. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and you are from Sat from Bernhardt, say Sat Cap Bernhardt Capital, and you do multifamily syndications. Mm-hmm. You're kind of you kind of get a little wholesaling. You kind of got your fingers in lots of stuff in real estate investing. And as I read it, you are also an accomplished pilot. Am I correct? Yep, yep. Not anymore. Um, yeah. But I used to I used to fly for the airlines, and 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 then uh, I stopped. Yeah. No, nope. I want to talk about that. But tell tell folks kind of your story. Give us kind of the. The, the elevator pitch, what you do and who you are and that your background. I want to dive into some stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I, I have two companies. I don't like to be too too spread too spread thin. You know, I like to be very hyper-focused on the things that I'm doing. So um, the, the only thing, I, both companies are involved in real estate. One of them is focused on uh, wholesaling, uh, which most of our audience, most of your audience, I'm sure is, is very familiar with what that is, right? Um, and the other company is focused on syndications and we are in the syndication space. We're very focused on the, on the equity side. So we will create funds and bring that equity to deals uh, for operators that we typically work with. Tell our, tell our listeners what, cause we don't always hear us talking about that. We know what it is, but tell me what, what syndicate, when you say your syndication on the equity side, what does that mean? Tell mm-hmm. me what that means. Yeah. So typically in a syndication, um, so a syndication is just a pool of money that is put together by investors to go and purchase a, a an asset, right? So typically all those apartment complexes that you see as you're driving around, they're owned by syndications. Um, they're, 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 I used to have, before I even got into that space, I used to think that it was just one particular person that owned that entire building, you know, until I found out that most of these buildings are owned via syndications. Um, so then when you get into that space, you realize that most people uh, focus on one thing and then uh, that's what they bring to the table on every single syndication. So there's several players that put together a syndication and typically you have the guy that brings the deal. There is a guy that uh, operates the deal and then there's a guy that uh, focuses on the capital. Some companies are vertically integrated and, but even then in-house, they still have each position separated, right? There's a guy that focuses strictly on their capital raising, finding deals, such and such. Um, so I, there, there's, there's operators that are very hyper-focused on managing and operating deals at the highest level, and they just don't have the time to be dedicated to be sourcing capital or looking for investors. So that's where I, people like me come in. Uh, we, we specialize in connecting, uh, investors that want to be investing in passive, uh, real estate deals and not have to be involved in any of the operations. So then we just connect the two together. So let me, let me break, let me break it down one more step for everybody. Then I want to ask your question. So, um, so everybody understands, like, let's just say that you got, you stumble onto a, I don't know what size asset you work in. Let's say it's a $10 million asset for argument's sake. And if you're in a $10 million asset, you know, you typically need to raise about $200,000 in outside capital because someone will get a loan for, I'm sorry, $2 million. million, Yeah. Yeah, The math was not quite right on my app, but 20%. (laughs) I, I, as I said it, I'm like, that's not, that's not right. I could do that. That sounds pretty cheap. So yeah, so about $2 million or 20% of that purchase price because somebody, one of the partners or one of the syndicators, right, will get a loan for the other 80% of that. A bank will loan 80% in a first position. So they'll, they'll loan $8 million. And then $2 million is divvied up to other people that let's say there's 10 of us that contribute to 200,000 each. That's what the 200,000 have been. So let's so say there's 10 of us that, that had 200,000 yeah. each and we all own a piece of that building now. Right. And there's an mm-hmm. operator, there's fees. It's all laid out. 
And that's that's essentially what you are in the capital raising side of that. Do you also do the loan side of it or does someone else do that? You just raise the actual hard capital. Uh, yeah, the latter, what you just said. So I, I'm just strictly on, on concentrate on that 2 million coming to that specific deal and someone else is, is getting that loan. Got it. Okay. Well, that's yeah. interesting that, that, you, that you guys do it like you break it up. I've always thought, one, like let's say we've talked we've talked about doing that so that's kind of next evolution of what we've done we've done about a thousand flips but we want to we want to move our we want to elevate what we do and kind of move different levels we've talked about that and i thought you had to kind of do everything interesting that you you said people kind of specialize in their own thing they all come together they all divvy up ownership of that property and away they go right yeah yeah exactly right yeah and and like you said everybody specializes in and like you said yeah everybody specializes in one thing and uh they they then then everybody comes together at the table to put together pieces and yeah, yeah so. i've always i've often wondered and i want to hear your question i've always, i've often wondered because i don't know the answer who owns the majority of that property because if somebody takes out a loan for eight million dollars you think that person owns the majority of it i don't think that's the case right yeah i i think you mean more in the sense like is a bank the real owner is that kind of what no, you're saying no, i mean the person that let's say i take a loan out because i have good credit and I, I can do it i take a loan out for eight million in the property but i don't put in my own cash in but there's but there's two million dollars that came out in cash who owns more of that property like there's a person that it's not like the person that took out 80 percent owns 80 percent of that asset right right um it's all it's all different every deal right but that's everything negotiable in life <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So typically, so a structure will be, I, I don't know if this is kind of going towards what you're asking, but like a, a syndication will be structure uh, 70, 30 or 80, 20 and between the passive investors and the active investors. Okay. So me being on the active side, I will form part of the 20% or the 30% of that deal and the other 80 or 70, which is the majority of the deal will be part of the passive investors. That's the person that goes out and gets the loan for it and or brings the money. Or just brings the cash and that's it. Those are for the guys that bring the cash. So like the two million, the two million that came in, uh, the the ten investors in that previous example that you were just talking about, right? Those ten investors will own seventy percent of the equity in that deal. So yeah. he who has the gold makes the rules, right? So he, so if you're bringing the capital, not the credit, but the capital, you own the majority of that property. Well, that's interesting. I I, just, I didn't know how that works. So thanks for jumping in there and, and putting that up. Yeah. So. For the people that, that are putting in, let's say they're two hundred thousand dollars to to create that two million in the scenario that Glenn used, what kind of a return on investment can those investors expect? Hmm. On average, yeah. I know it's probably going to be you know again everything in life is negotiable, so every deal is probably unique a little bit. But what's what's on average can they expect? Yeah, on average, so most deals in Drenta right now we've been going through such a bullish market until just yeah. about a month ago, right? That uh, every <laughs> yeah. every deal. So the typical projections, every deal is underwritten to five years. And in those five years, uh, you're supposed to make a 2x your, your money, right? We call it two, uh, 2x equity multiple, which means you put $50,000 in. Um, by the time the whole deal is said and done and we exit the property, your $50,000 will turn into $100,000. That's between cash flow and profit upon the sale of the property. Okay. Um, they also take part of depreciation as an owner. You, you take the depreciation as well. So during the time that you're holding onto the property, uh, you will not pay taxes on the cash flow that you receive. And okay. sometimes there's even more depreciation that you take on top of that that you can use to offset your other income. So like for me, I invest passively and active on syndication. So I'm also on the passive side. I put my own money as a passive investor on the deals that we do. And I take all of the, that depreciation and I use it to offset my income from my wholesaling business. Okay. And right. that's, that's very cool. That's, uh, that's, that's pretty awesome. So what, what made you want to go from being a pilot to real estate investor? Yeah. So, um, I don't know how much, you know, how much you guys know about the, uh, airline lifestyle or the pilot Wait, lifestyle. Let me, but... let me show you something. Hold on. This was a gift my wife got me because I've always wanted to go through and become a pilot. So I've got Dude, this. I love it. Of me, right? So you know this language, right? <laughs> Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, 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 right? You know all that. So, I love it. I love so it. That's you awesome. Got, you got a guy here who's taken about four lessons. It's all, all I've taken. And I've been I've been considering getting back in. But I want to hear your story. But I, I actually, um, I realized one day up in the plane five years ago when I was taking my lessons that my brain was every place else but flying. And I told my instructor, I said, I don't feel safe. 
and I'm not a guy that doesn't feel safe. Like I, I, I mean, I'm usually my, I'm very risk adverse. I don't care about it. But up there, I'm thinking, I can't be thinking about a spreadsheet or a business deal or a transaction when I'm trying to fly the friggin' plane. So yeah. I, he, said, he said, you're smart. He said, I, I know a lot of, you know, lawyers and do- smart people that have died because they're thinking something else while they're up here. Well, plus you also saw the women getting on the private jet and you were like, yeah, I'd kind of rather be in the back sipping cocktails. Yeah, <laughs> that was, yeah, that was, yeah, we, we, we taken private jets a couple of times. That's awful nice. So I, once I had that little taste in my mouth, it was tough to get in that puddle jumper, you know? So anyways, yeah. you know, so you're talking to someone that really has a, um, a real, uh, infatuation with uh, with airline you know i watch plays go over and i think hmm might we get back in that someday so anyways yeah. yeah you can do it man um but yeah so i started flying i was i started flying when i was 18 so i was pretty young and then i got hired by the airlines when i was 21 and wow. uh four years into it i was uh looking around and seeing the lifestyle that that you know that it took to become an, to be an airline pilot and i just i was gone away from home too much and i was missing holidays i was missing birthday celebrations and just because those things are happening and you're not home that doesn't mean that they're your you know your family is not going to do them they're still they still do them and you're just not there so it just i just started having this feeling that i was like a stranger every time i come home just because to them it was the same either way but i was missing all those things and i just didn't like that feeling so that's when I started looking for something else. I love flying. Flying the plane was pretty cool. And I still enjoy it every once in a while. I still go fly. But just the lifestyle, I said, you know what? I got to figure out something out where I have a little bit more of a flexibility on my schedule. Um, not sure if you guys know this, but as, a, as an airline pilot here in the United States, we can drop a lot of our trips. The only caveat is obviously you won't get paid, right? But you can you can advertisement to your pilot group in your airline and, and if somebody else wants to pick it up they can pick it up right and so i said you know what if i can have some extra income on the side i can i can substitute that for my airline income and then i can just give up my trips and that way i can only fly when i want to so that's what got me into real estate and i just did not know i had no sales background no real estate experience nothing right so i figured a friend of mine that was a broker, he says, hey, man, you might want to try wholesaling. And that's when I stumbled upon wholesaling, right? So I started studying everything that I, there was to learn. Uh, and and then started a wholesaling company in 2018. Um, I started growing that company. And then I realized, okay, well, this is cool. Um, we have a lot more team members in that company. and But it was still very transactional. I wasn't really building uh, a, a passive income. And it allowed me to accomplish my objective, you know, because I was getting income from my wholesaling business. So I was able to still drop my trips and 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 do the lifestyle that I was looking for. And some months I wouldn't even go to work at all to the airlines. You know, I will drop all of my trips. I owe money to the airline because they were paying for my insurance. And obviously they, they, they deduct your portion out of your paycheck. But because I wasn't working, you know, I owed them money. So I had to send them a check. Yeah. Uh, so I thought that was funny. But uh, then... So then I started looking, I was like, okay, I got to build my, my passive income. And I just didn't want to add another layer of, of an extra thing to do. If I started getting single family homes and then managing those properties myself. Um, so that's when I stumbled up on syndications, you know, I was like, okay, well, with a syndication is very passive. Like if it truly is what is what they say it is, you know, that you can just invest your money in some like the, the active team or the operating team will be taking care of the asset. I mean, that's pretty cool. And so I don't own any single family homes in our wholesaling business. We do, we flip them, right. We flip the contracts, but we just, I, I have the opportunity to own many, but I just don't, because to me, it's just, I'll rather just keep putting, shoveling my money into syndications and multifamily deals and let my money grow that way than, than being um, involved in the operation of a single family home. Yeah. Um, so that's what got me into that. And in 2020, um, my airline shut down. And uh, the, yeah, so they shut down in the pandemic, right? It was in the middle oh, of the pandemic. Oh, and yeah. yeah, and we had, we were a pretty big regional airline. We thought that nothing would take us down. And we had been a long time uh, around for many, many years, you know, so we were like the last airline that anybody thought will go down and we actually shut our doors, you know, so uh, I did not care that much because I already had my wholesaling business and the income coming in. But 
all of my friends at the airlines were really struggling because not only did we shut down, but also nobody else was hiring. So they could not get other jobs. And I, that's when it clicked in my in my mind. I said, you know what? I can probably help other pilots do the same thing that I was doing and start getting that passive income through syndications. And that's why my business you model. Like, you, you know how to talk to them. You speak right. To them. Yeah. And I know the struggles of the lifestyle, you know, and yeah. I, I know what they want. I know what I wanted when I was at an airline pilot. So that's why um, I don't know if you guys looked at my website and everything is very geared towards uh, pilots, right, to invest in syndications. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's been my journey so far. And, and that's what I'm doing. Great. I got to give you props for figuring that out so early. I don't think a lot of people figure that out until they're much older. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. It's spiteful for you to have figured that out as early as you did and to, to have like that, you know, what do I want out of life at, at such an early age? I mean, we, we pretty much just had that conversation about a month ago <laughs> about not, not exactly the same thing, but, but it's like, whatever you're doing in life is the juice worth the squeeze. Right. You know, so, so yes, you wanted to be a pilot, but it was taking away from some other really important areas of your life. And so many people get stuck in that though. And they either don't have the courage or the, the foresight to figure out, hey, I want to do something different, or the motivation to have that plan B in place. They just get stuck in that, you know, everyday nine to five, lather, rinse, repeat, do the same thing tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people get stuck in that. So I, I got to give you props for, for figuring that out. Thank you. Yeah. And I appreciate it. And, 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 and you bring up a good point because and you guys are in the education space, right? And you That's see how many, how many people don't take action. And, and it's like, it's like, dude, all you have to do is X, Y, Z and people, they need to take action. You like this, is something they really need, like a bunch of pilots, right? They, they, yeah. they need, they, they all talk about investing in real estate. They all talk about doing the thing. Right. But they never actually do it. Easy to talk. Right. Yeah. Easy to talk. <laughs> exactly yeah we we put on we put on a home flipping workshop and we uh they've become pretty pretty well renowned we started doing it back in 2016 and then back when the pandemic hit we had to completely innovate our delivery so we went to zoom and now we do zoom you know maybe nine times a year or so nine ten times a year and it, it's been an amazing thing for us and you know i like amber said i give a lot of props i started my first business when i was 19 years old oh props wow. that props i own pilot Prop. That's way I <laughs> jet pilot, probably, but that's okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's pretty, yeah, very true. But I, I didn't do that on purpose. So, but I will give you props for that because I, I respect that because I started my first business at 19. I'm 53, I'm almost 54, and I, I've always worked for myself. Your generation has an advantage over mine. There wasn't as many young entrepreneurs when I got started because I think that the information member. You probably can't even imagine the time without the internet, but I can, right? So there's a time without right. the internet and without cell phones and all that. And so just information at your fingertips allows people that have the inner fortitude to take a step. Now, you bring up another good point because so many people don't. And people come to our workshops and, you know, out of the workshops there, I, 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 start, I start our home living workshop by saying, hey, look, you know, you're, congratulations, you're a 10 percenter. Mm -hmm. We have millions of people that see an ad. Thousands go to a website and then usually hundreds buy a ticket. So it's 10% that take that action. Then from there, I say, now we're going to see who's here on Sunday. And it's not usually 10%, but we have, a, we have some drop off. But then we choose a group of people to work with and coach personally. And, and that's the 10% of the 10%. And it really, it boils down to who's ready to take action. And then what we, what we, where we step ourselves apart from everybody else is we work on their mindset. Because we know, that's why our, our podcast is yeah. called The Real State of Mind, because we know that if you don't have your head right, you'll never get your wallet, your bank account right. Never. Right. Well, so you know, right? To, to be able to, there's fear. I don't know if you had a family at the time when you walked away from being a pilot. Did you have family or just you or? Yeah, my wife. Right. But, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, there's someone, someone else in your family to, to help support, right? So, um, you know, it takes, it, it takes courage, to step forward to your dreams and your goals. And most people, like you said, they they gibber, they give you a lot of lip service, blah, 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 but they don't actually, you're like, freaking do something, man. Right. Do it. Stop talking. I've had some of my best friends, I'm like, stop talking about it and do it. Finally, I just said, I love you guys. So whenever you're ready, let's, you know, I'm right, here to right. help, you know, so <laughs> that cracks me up. But well, that's great, man. So what what's been kind of your mindset? 
piece that's kept you going through the tough times? We talked to talk to people about that. What's what's kind of been your real estate of mind? What's been the the part that you drawn, or what keeps you going through the tough times? Because not every day is a good day. I know that. Yeah, yeah. especially in real estate, man. A lot of things. Oh, yeah. uh, it, it's 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 uh, it's not easy for sure. Um, dude, about the mindset, I think I think is for me is is the chase of the next thing. Um, I don't I don't really have. You know, I know a lot of people have their why of providing for their family. And I mean, yeah, of course I have that, you know, but I don't have to be doing all the stuff that I do to do that. You know, I could just go get a job that is simpler and mm -hmm. make enough money to provide for my family, you know. So yeah. I think at the bottom, uh, really deep inside is really just accomplishing something like a, challenging myself to see where, where, where can I take it. Um, and I think that's what I've always done. Uh, it. And I've done it because I like that. I like the feeling of, of okay, I got to X this point right here. Uh, can I push it to the next level? Can I do the next thing? You know, and when once I've noticed this trend in, in, in my life, you know, that once I get to accomplish a certain goal, then I lose interest in it. Uh, and, and then I'm looking for, okay, well, what is, what's next? You know, what, what else can I do? It's a personality trait, yeah. I did a talk not too long ago to a group of entrepreneurs and I said, you know, there's a, something that's inside of every one of us in this room. We want more. We can't help it. We want more. But what I did say was that you got to be careful that you're wanting more doesn't interfere with the most important things in your life, like your family, your what, your spouse, your children, because the wanting more can be very much like a, hey, yeah, I, I, honey, I'll be right with you. I'm, I'll be right with you. Just don't bother daddy right now. Don't. And that, that can happen because you and I want more. When we actually have more in front of us, ask yeah. for our attention and we don't always give it. So I don't know if you have kids yet, but if that, if that goes down, do you have children yet or no? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We have, we have a son and dude, I, I, I hundred percent relate to that. No. Yeah. And, and yeah. It, it gets yeah. worse when they get older because they want more of your attention and stuff. And it's, it's, and they, and it's. Don't get so busy making a living that you forget to, to make, make a life. life. Yeah. And that's, that's the hardest part I can give you just from an older entrepreneur to a younger one is that. It goes so fast and um, in a moment you can snap because you're mad at business and you say something that changes things forever with your kids. So just, just something that I did, I did yeah. a talk and everybody like, well, like, oh my, that, like tears in the room. I'm like, I know just because I, I have made mistakes and I share some of my mistakes with my, with my older daughter. No, no amount of money can replace the connection that you either have or don't have yeah. with your, with your kids but, and your spouse. But he just yeah. like, it just like you, we want more. So it's a balance in our life all the time to find that balance of I want to I want more I want to be bigger I want to I want to learn more I want to do more I want to build more because we like to build sometimes not even, sometimes we don't even make money on stuff we just build so we like to build stuff you know so, yeah what I, what I love about you guys is that you guys both seem to be on the same page about the same thing yeah right and and that's pretty cool because you can both you're both pushing to to do more together right and you understand yeah. each other's mindset and I think that's crucial. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's many people in the audience, uh, that like me and my wife are not really that on the same mindset on wanting more. She sure. does, she could, she could care less if we were making millions or hundred thousands. Right. Yeah. So that's a little bit of a struggle to really, uh, yeah. Get across to say like, listen, this is like, this is what drives me. And, and, but you don't really care about that, you know? So, so yeah, yeah. dude, I, I love, I, I I like that you guys are in the same page on that. We are, but you know, Amber, Amber's, we're, we're, we're also pretty good about balancing each other. She balances me a lot more because I'm definitely more the go-go and, and that and she is too, but she's also good about reminding me about things. Even sometimes, you know, and I've gotten much better at it, but even sometimes she's, you know, the kids will be saying something to me and I don't hear them, right? I'm on my phone, I'm talking to somebody and they're, they're like, and she, she'll go, honey, your kids have said something three times to you. And then I feel like a shit. I'm like, oh God. You're right. You know, so that little balance is nice to have too, just to kind of remind you, yes, we want more, but also there's more important things to stay. So. Right, right. So how do people find you, Satch? If yeah. they want to learn more about you or invest with you? Yeah, for sure. So there's- not pilots invest with you? Oh yeah. So that's funny you, you ask because- pilot money, right? Yeah, yeah. That's funny oh, you right? ask because 50% of our investors are not pilots. Yeah, uh, I think- and, and I went to an air show and most people, most people- came to the to the booth uh i put an exhibit and they will come obviously it says pilots are everywhere you know so they'll come and say listen what's this about pilot thing you know can i invest and i was like yeah for sure you know i just it's just my story so i'll tell it right but 
yeah, if, if you want to connect with me, um, I have some some free stuff. So um, I actually created an ebook that uh, will can explain everything about syndications, how syndications work. Uh, so if you want to find out more about um, syndication world and how you can get some of your uh, time back, uh, go to burnhardcapital.net forward slash ebook and you can download that ebook for free. Awesome. Bernhard, bernhardcapital.net forward slash ebook. Yep. Let's get him in the door with you and t- spell Bernhardt for him. His Bernhardt is B E R N H A R D T. Delta Tango. Uh, <laughs> I'm still working on it. I'm getting there. So, yeah. It's fun to be quitting each other. Yeah, I know. Well, Sash, this has been a great interview, man. I really enjoyed it today. It was good uh, good stuff. And I think people learned a lot about syndication and learned a lot about, uh, you know, kind of going after their dreams and uh, going for it. So it's always exciting to hear other ways of investing in real estate. 100%. Besides just the typical what people think. 100%. Yeah, we, we just got through. I'll do a little plug for ourselves. We just got through finishing our book. It's on Amazon now called The Birth of the Everyday Real Estate Investor. It's a, it's a road it. that goes through our whole kind of chronicles, what we've done and, and all in that space. And uh you yeah, look forward to our next thing, right? To figure out the next the next level in real next, estate. Yeah. So cool. Well, Sats, thanks so much for being here, man. I appreciate it. Best of luck in the future. And if you guys want to reach out to him, you got that website. We'll have it uh, posted on the link or someplace around here. And uh, we'll uh, hopefully cross paths again. So yeah. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Amber. Make sure you like and subscribe and leave us a review. And leave us your questions and comments and we will personally answer. And please share it to anyone you think could benefit. You can find us all over social media at Glenn and Amber Swarm. We'll see you next week.